Hello, Guardians. Today is May the 5th, 2023. My name's Dan Finity, and welcome to Destiny Digest. Welcome in, and thank you so much for listening to the show. This week is packed, folks, so we will get to the information as quickly as possible. This episode will not have any interviews for it. I hope you guys enjoyed the bonus episode uh, with TBL and and Jordan that I released on Tuesday. If you haven't, go back and listen to that. Some really old school Planet Destiny vibes in there. Grateful to have them again as guests on the show. Over the next two weeks... We will go back to doing some state of PVP and PVE panels. I've already reached out to guests. We're getting things put together. Those will be big. I think the rotation of doing state of a core playlist panel, uh, doing those every other season to give the sandbox time to grow, to give the sandbox time to breathe, to get some fresh takes on it. From people in PvE and PvP, I don't know if I'll be doing another Gambit one anytime soon. I gotta wait until maybe Gambit gets some sort of update in order to continue doing that one. But next week, we will have a state of the PvP. And then the week after that, a panel on the state of PvE. It should be, should be great. Really looking forward to it and excited with all the guests that I have planned ahead. Just a quick reminder, if you would like to support the show, head on over to coffee.com forward slash Danfinity. That is ko-fi.com forward slash Danfinity. For as little as three bucks a month, you can help keep the lights on and join the ranks of people like Hobo Scruff, Ian Schwartz, Clancy5000, Seishu, Average Destiny 2 player, and Cab in helping to produce this show for you all. Now let's get into the news. On Wednesday, May 3rd, PC Gamer released an article called Bungie Lawsuit Ends with Destiny 2 Cheat Seller on the Hook for $12 million. Quoting the article, Bungie has won a lawsuit it brought in 2021 against the Romanian national Mihai Claudio Florentin, who it said was behind software called Veteran Cheats that players bought in order to cheat in Destiny 2. In February this year, Bungie requested around $12 million in damages and a motion for default judgment, a request that the court has now granted. Later in the article, it states that the court further entered a permanent injunction against Claudio Florentin, which stops him from engaging in any kind of conduct that would violate Bungie's copyright. Although the Veteran Cheats website is still active, the Destiny 2 section of the cheats have notably been removed. This next bit of news is about uh, season pass pricing. This was in the TWAB this week, but I decided to pull it out to give a little bit more information on consumer side for you guys. Quoting from the TWAB here, they state, As our teams continue to invest in crafting compelling seasonal experiences for the year of Lightfall, there's a heads up we wanted to give regarding a small increase in the standalone season pass beginning with Season of the Deep. Here's what you can expect. A season pass will go from 1,000 silver to 1200 silver and a season pass plus 10 ranks bundle will go from 2000 silver to 2200 silver essentially from one season pass dollar wise it used to be ten dollars for seasons now it's going to be 12 and instead of 20 dollars for a season plus 10 ranks it's now going to be 22 this will be the new pricing for season passes in lightfall's year for those looking to maximize the rewards with each new season and will be evaluating new approaches to post-launch content in the year of Final Shape. Pricing will remain unchanged for the Lightfall Standard Edition, which includes access to the current live season at the time of purchase, and Lightfall and Annual Pass Edition, which includes access to seasons 20 through 23. Tuesday brought with it not only Guardian games, in which Guardians compete from class to class, in Strikes and Crucible, in order to earn medals in a light, friendly, competitive spirit. But it also brought with it Destiny 2 Hotfix 7.0.5.2. The Hotfix brought changes to activities such as Crucible. They fixed an issue where players were getting suspended in Crucible when completing a match without quitting. Matchmaking for Clash, Zone Control, and Rift is now connection-based. So you now have CBMM. 
For seasonal rewards, they fixed an issue where players weren't able to complete the last Will and Testament quest if they had picked up the Brazen Spark Ship via the War Table. You can now go ahead and complete that quest. For armor, they fixed an issue with the Firepower Armor mod, where orbs of power were spawning at their origin point instead of on defeated enemies. They also fixed an issue where the Guardian Games class item could be dismantled for legendary shards and glimmer. As far as general fixes go, they moved the Twitch sub bounty rewards back to the Cryptarch and audio distortion that has been an issue on consoles and on PC has been improved with a final fix coming at a later date. Wednesday and Thursday, we got some meaty articles from Bungie. On Wednesday, we received the Season 21 Abilities Tuning Preview, and on Thursday, we received a 6,500-word, 6,500-word twab. Now, I'm going to try to get through as much of this as possible, but I will go ahead and state this now. I will have links to all of the articles that are sourced here today in the description for the video or the podcast that you are listening to right now. As far as the TWAB goes, before we get into ability tuning, we did get our first look at the key art for Destiny 2's Season 21, Season of the Deep, that will be launching on May 23rd at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. The image is of a large port window facing out into an ocean with a giant eye overlooking three guardians who, get this, can survive water the armor looks phenomenal if this is the seasonal armor that we are seeing in the key art i will be grinding that out with all abandon it just looks so damn pretty we also get a look at what could possibly be the titan sloan most notably from saturn's moon titan which used to be a location in destiny 2 for all of those new lights in the crowd one specific detail that seems to be a change for Sloane is that she is sporting a taken arm. Incredible. I think this is our first human that has been partially taken. Really eager to see what they do with season 21. And we'll be seeing more information about that over the next coming weeks in the TWAB. Getting into the abilities tuning preview and some of the information that we got from the TWAB. They start out the Season 21 Abilities Tuning Preview by stating that they had several high-level goals. One was to increase viability of roaming supers and high-difficulty PvE content. They incorporate subclass keywords into a selection of light subclass supers, reduce the amount of unlimited uptime mobility available in the Crucible, and increase build crafting capabilities of a selection of stasis and light subclass aspects. After they stated their goals, they start in with the Fragment Budget Review, stating, Over the last year, we've consistently heard feedback that single Fragment Slot aspects feel restrictive to player build crafting freedom. Fragment Slots are a critical balancing lever that we intend to continue to use to control aspect potency, but we don't feel that any of the current single Fragment Slot aspects are overperforming to the point of restricting them to a single slot. So with Season 21, we're increasing those single slot fragments up to two. So on your Hunters, Trapper's Ambush, Shatter Dive, and Gunpowder Gamble, those are moving from having one aspect slot up to two. For Titans, Bastion and Juggernaut move from one to two. And on the Warlock, the Chaos Accelerant moves from one to two. I'm grouping in a little bit of this conversation from Aspects with talk from the TWAB. We will see new aspects for Strand, with the Hunter aspect getting Threaded Spectre when you activate your class ability to leave behind a decoy woven from Strand matter that draws the attention of nearby combatants. For Titan, you will receive the Flechette Storm. While sliding, you activate your Charge Melee ability to leap into the air, knocking nearby targets away and dealing damage. While Airborne, you activate your Charge Melee again to launch a cluster of damaging, unraveling, projectiles. Repeatedly activating melee will chain additional throws. The warlock aspect is called the wanderer, where tangles that you throw will attach to enemies and detonate into a suspending burst. Threadling final blows with this aspect will create a tangle. There are already some crazy builds in the game when it comes to fragments and aspects, and I highly suggest that you look up videos from Matt Goes Buck or Haterade 
former guests of the show. With those older fragments leveling up from one to two, you should be able to sweeten builds for your characters when it comes to light abilities. And those new strand aspects just sound nuts. I really kind of, I really like the power fantasy of a hunter leaving behind a strand decoy. That's something unique that we haven't really seen in the game. Moving into super tuning, all supers will get increased PvE damage resistance by around 20%. In this next section of the article, they break into individual classes like Hunter. They say that overall, the team is happy with where Hunter supers are in high-level PvE gameplay. They offer strong burst damage from relative safety, and several already have keyword integration. However, there's still a few supers that are lagging behind the rest of the pack that they would like to address. So for Golden Gun, for both Marksman and Deadshot, they are increasing PvE damage by 20%. For Arc Staff, they are increasing PvE damage by 20%. Spectral Blades, which personally I haven't touched in what seems like years, they are increasing PvE damage by 35%. The Heavy Attack now weakens targets on hit, and they fix an issue causing some right-hand Spectral Blade attacks to fail to connect when attacking at maximum attack speed. Gathering Storm will have direct impact damage versus players increase from 200 to 300. Delayed Lightning Strike damage versus players increase from 300 to 500. Lingering Lightning Tick damage versus players increase from 40 to 60. And it will now deal increased damage versus Well of Radiance and Ward of Dawn. Titans will see Fist of Havoc line attack costs reduce from 8.5 to 6%. The heavy attack costs reduce from 18% to 12. They increase the heavy attack PVE damage by 33%, and heavy attack now blinds targets near the center of the slam area. For Glacial Quake, they increase the Shiver Strike thrust speed while in super by 10%, and increase light attack damage by 20. For Sentinel Shield, Hammer of Soul, and Burning Maul, they're happy with their performance given their additional utility, but they feel that some minor damage increases would significantly help their usability in situations where pure offense is needed. So Sentinel Shield receives an increase of PvE damage by 20%. Hammer of Soul and Burning Maul both receive an increase of 10% in PvE, with Burning Maul now creating a sunspot on cast when Soul Invictus is equipped, matching the behavior of Hammer of Soul, and the heavy attack Cyclone now applies Scorch over time. For Warlocks, Nova Warp will see an increase to PvE damage by 15%, and a fully charged attack now makes enemies volatile on hit. Nova Bomb will see 20% more PvE damage. For Stormcaller, Storm Trance gets a PvE damage increase by 25%, with damage ramp while attacking now occurring more quickly, over 3 seconds down from 5. Landfall Detonation and Seekers now jolt targets. Chaos Reach, which seems to be probably one of the biggest MVPs of this entire article, gets an increased PvE damage by 25%. Sustained damage on a single target now creates a jolting lightning strike at the target's location. Increased damage resistance versus players from 40% to 50%. Increase the maximum strafe speed from 3.5 meters to 4.5 meters per second and adjusted the super camera to avoid the player's body blocking view of targets when strafing. Winter's Wrath gets a 10% damage increase, and much like what they did with Chaos Reach, they are adjusting Daybreak super camera to allow the player to look down further and avoid VFX blocking view of targets when moving quickly. For Strand, we already know some of the changes that they're going to be making, most notably from the TWAB last week but we'll go ahead and cover some of that already in case you haven't listened to last week's episode. For the Hunter's Threaded Spike, they increase the projectile travel range before beginning to return to the player by 30%. They increase damage versus PvE combatants by around 55%. That's huge. Uh, slightly reduce speed of the dart so that when it returns, it's easier to catch. They increase energy gain for catching the dart based on the number of enemies hit. Now pierces Cabal Failing Shields and no longer prioritizes the catch action over the grapple melee if an enemy target is within grapple melee range. For Titans, the Frenzied Blade receives a decrease to cooldown based on how many melee charges the player has stored. At zero charges, cooldown is reduced by 15%, and at two charges, cooldown is reduced by 30%. Warlock's Arcane Needle gets a decreased cooldown based on how many melee charges the player has stored. 
at zero charges, the cooldown is reduced by 15%, and at two charges, cooldown reduced by 30, so they kind of standardize that with the Frenzied Blade. They also increase the projectile speed based on the projectile's flight time, and they increase the projectile tracking strength by 10%. In Season 21, your grapple is about to get better, with reduced base cooldown from 105 seconds to 82 seconds, and a reduction to the minimum time between grapple activations from 2.5 seconds to 0.2 seconds. Season 21 will also see stasis tuning updates being kind of like the granddaddy of the 3.0s themselves. Hunter's Withering Blade will receive increased projectile tracking search range on bounce versus players by 20%. They will also have an increase to maximum tracking strength by 12.5%. Titan's Shiver Strike maximum thrust while in flight will be increased by 16%. They will also be decreasing the maximum downward influence of gravity while in flight by 18%. Howl of the Storm will receive an increased width of Freezing Cone versus players by 31%. And Warlock's Frost Pulse now provides 2 meters of additional melee lunge range after activation for 1.2 seconds. The rest of Wednesday's article also includes a lot of light subclass tuning updates, including changes to how shoulder charge abilities on Titan are handled, most notably with Seismic Strike, Shield Bash, and Hammer Strike, now costing 15% melee energy on activation, with base cooldowns now standardized at 91 seconds. That feels like it's the biggest one of the three, with Hunters having some knife changes, and Warlocks getting changes to their melee abilities. Once again, for a full list of all the changes, be sure to check out the article through the link in the show notes. Moving on to the TWAB for some economy changes. Season 21 is notably the first time they will not be increasing power bands in Destiny 2 from season to season. So if you're already sitting pretty at 1810, don't worry, you don't need to keep grinding unless you want to do bounties for next season so that you can get your artifact up on day one. That's up to you. I'm personally taking a break so I don't burn myself out. The power floor is at 1600. The soft cap at 1750. Powerful cap at 1800. And pinnacle caps, which are 1810, will not change over the course of season 21. And if you've already hit that cap in season 20, you will remain that cap in season 21. Season 21 brings with it exotic armor focusing and decryption will be coming to Rahul at the start of season 21 with a standard decryption allowing players to decrypt Ingrams for free. You'll also receive random drops from standard exotic Ingram loot pools at no additional cost. Focusing an Ingram to receive a random roll of exotic armors from associated expansions will require ownership of the associated expansion as well as having previously acquired all the armor pieces within the Ingram for your class. It will cost one exotic Ingram, 30,000 Glimmer, and one Ascendant Shard. If you're focusing at Tier 2, it will have a higher cost, one exotic Ingram, 60,000 Glimmer, three Ascendant Shards, and one exotic Cypher. That is to focus a specific exotic armor for high cost. They also note that you can expect the average stats for those exotics to be around mid 60s that's a good change since they are not increasing the power level for the pinnacle cap in season 21 they will be changing the rewards for basic complete activities challenges to a focusable powerful exotic ingram giving you three to nine free achievable and deterministic weekly exotic ingrams from the crucible gambit and strike playlists my personal thought on that is we already have a lot of pinnacle draw in the game right now. Um, and changing those out to guaranteed exotics, I think will help out a lot of people who are looking to finish builds or who are just looking for that little bit of a higher stat. In season 21, they will be adding the ability to electively activate deep sight on weapon instances to obtain pattern progress. This capability will be accessible through a new mod slot in the weapon details screen for eligible weapons. They will be introducing a new deep sight harmonizer currency to perform the activations on a weapon. Non-raid weapons will cost one harmonizer, while raid weapons will require 15 spoils of conquest in addition to one harmonizer. The harmonizers will be obtained from season pass rank rewards, which will be the sole source of the currency for the initial rollout of the feature. 
Additionally, only one harmonizer can be stored in the inventory at a time, and this currency does not stack. I really don't like it that we can't store as many of these as we want, as well as like other currencies in the game. I get that there's limitations. I get that they want to control the economy. But I mean, like, it's it's all pixels on a screen, man. Just just number go up. Number go up. Crafting costs will see a change in Season 21, with Legendary Shard costs being removed from crafting components. Glimmer and Enhancement core costs will remain untouched. Enhanced weapon costs are based on weapon masterwork costs, and thus will require Legendary Shards, as we are not yet modifying the weapon masterwork economy in Season 21. In quality of life, we are seeing some of the older raids, such as Last Wish, Deepstone Crypt, Vow of the Disciple, Vault of Glass and Kingsfall all getting the same treatment as Duality, Spire of the Watcher, and Root of Nightmares, where if you complete certain triumphs, such as a Petra's run in Last Wish, you get a rate boost toward the raid exotic. That is a huge boon for those who have been grinding out different raids, sometimes 60 times, sometimes 100 times, and still not getting the exotic from that raid. Now, if you complete triumphs, for those raids, certain ones will boost the chance of receiving an exotic. These will all be retroactive, so if you've already completed them, you do not need to worry about completing them again. Hopefully, you'll get them on the next shot at running them. Finest Matter Weave and Rainmaker will be getting a deprecation in Season 21. With all existing instances of Finest Matter Weave being dismantled for one enhancement core each, and all existing instances of Rainmaker being dismantled for 3,000 Glimmer. We're seeing some changes in Vanguard bounties, daily bounties that require you to get a specific type of kill, so like a grenade or a headshot or any of the special or heavy weapons, now will require twice as many kills to complete, but can be done anywhere in the game with increased progress on Vanguard ops or nightfalls. They're also adding a number of new bounties, such as killing elites, mini bosses, and champions, Kills with elemental abilities, with bonuses for killing with a subclass verb, completing two vanguard activities, etc., etc. They'll also be adding one repeatable bounty for getting fire team kills in a vanguard activity. RG, our little good boy, will be returning to the tower in season 21, so make sure that you get all the pets in. I know this has been a long one, but thank you so much for sticking with me. We only have a few more items to go, and these all center around. Trials of Osiris. Trials of Osiris will be seeing several major changes in Season of the Deep, not only in rewards such as the Hero's Wake Exotic Ghost Shell, the Valiant Memory Exotic Ship, or the Survivor's Journey Exotic Sparrow. No, no, no. Season of the Deep is also bringing with it the Messenger, High Impact Kinetic Pulse Rifle, and the Unexpected Resurgence Adaptive Arc Glaive with the Glaive being first available on the weekend of June 9th, with the Adept version of the Messenger being available on the weekend of June 16th. In Season 21, Trials of Osiris will be getting an intro quest, with the first step being to complete your competitive placement matches, get 50 kills in competitive, and raise your power level. Step 2 will be to pick up a Trials Passage, play a game of Trials, win one round of Trials, get one elimination in Trials, you'll get a reward, and then a roll of the Astral Horizon Trial Shotgun. Trials Passages will be receiving an update to the Passage of Wealth, which previously granted reputation on wins 3, 5, and 7 on a card. In Season 21, the Passage will grant plus 75 Trials Rep for each win, along with an additional bonus to your current Major rank in Trials, up to plus 150. The Passage of Mercy in Season 21 will forgive two losses, if you have not yet been flawless for the week. After going flawless, if you reset your card, it will revert to forgiving a single loss on each card. Trials of Osiris in Season of the Deep will be moving from Elimination to Dominion as the core game mode for Trials. Dominion, for those of you who don't know, is kind of like Control. It'll, it will allow you to capture a zone to get points on top of Eliminations. They made these changes for several reasons, one of which being offering a choice between playing elimination and playing an objective. Sure, you can wipe out an entire team, but if you can capture the zone, that's good too. On average, games will be 15% faster than standard elimination games. 
Objectives will promote more varied engagements on the maps as the zones direct players around the map and establish multiple defined fronts. Bungie says that point four will be to promote a healthier sandbox variety in both weapons and subclasses and will provide more balancing levers to change the gameplay experience. They also note that they understand that switching to Dominion may make carrying other players to the lighthouse a more difficult challenge due to the increased premium placed on solid teamwork, but it is important to note that these experiences must be weighed against the bulk of the player experiences in the playlist when they make decisions on what changes to implement. I'm excited to talk uh, to the folks from the PvP panel next week about all of these changes, and hopefully we receive more insight on what they as players are thinking, maybe a little bit more clarity on on Bungie's end, even though like the numbered list and all of the sub points underneath seem pretty specific. Finally, 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 the last bit of news is that a new emblem will be rewarded to players when they open the flawless chest at the lighthouse if they did not trail during any of their wins on their flawless card, meaning that you must get a flight of the pigeon medal for every win. This will be coming in season 20's Dominion Trials because they wanted to provide a special deterministic reward to allow players to prove their skill above and beyond simply going flawless. Personally, all for more cosmetics in the game that show that you've completed stuff. It's a badge of achievement. I'm looking forward to seeing all the sevens on the journey rocking that new emblem that I don't think they gave a name to yet. It doesn't look like they gave it a name here in the 12. That all said, it brings us to the end of this week's Destiny Digest. My name's Dan Finity. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram and the TikTok at Dan Finity, where the answer else. You can also find me on Twitch three days a week, rocking a little bit of Jedi Survivor, a little bit of Guardian games here and there. If you'd like to support the show, please remember to rate and review on your podcast platform of choice. Anything you say helps in the algorithm. If you'd like to support the show monetarily, head on over to coffee.com forward slash Danfinity. That is ko-fi.com forward slash Danfinity. Give three bucks a month, help keep the lights on. Once again, all the links will be in the notes for the show. Thank you so much for listening, and I hope you find what you're grinding for.